bear with me while I just adjust the camera. I haven't figured out how to get it done ahead of time. I think we're looking pretty good here. Close your eyes. I am Eastern, so we're going to go live in 10 minutes, but I like to come on a little bit early and just do a little bit of a chitter chatter session before we get started. Whoops, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, I guess that's as far as I can get and zoomed out. Sorry. Now, for those of you that are coming and watching the replay, I just like to give you a little bit of warning. It is now about 10 minutes to 12. I like to come on 10 minutes early and just sit around and chat a little bit. And that way, I don't know, I just like to ease into it to make sure I'm here on time. Anyone who wants to pop over early can go ahead. Just excuse me while I lean forward for a minute. I've got you guys set up. I've moved my laptop and my tablet so that I can see no matter where I move everything around because last time I couldn't see everybody. Hello from Kansas and Germany. Okay, we're good. Last time I think I was knitting or something like that. This time... Oh, my tablet is much slower. Hold on, hold on. Okay, bring the chat back up. If you guys have a question for me, if you put either my name in capitals or your entire question in capitals, I'll be able to catch it a lot easier. We have a few people that are moderating for me. Cordula, Brenda, Sue, Diana. Is that Danny Rose? New Mexico, hello, hello. Lisa, no problem wrapping days in and out. Is that time of year? Before we get started with the cozies, I thought maybe you guys might want to see what I bought myself for Christmas. Some of you may remember that I still can't get used to you guys not talking back to me. It's just so strange. Anyway, some of you guys may remember I was talking about how I love the felt stockings. And a few of you reminded me, hey, Hershner sells them, Robin. And I missed the sale by like just one or two days. And I'm like, darn. So they didn't really have any felt stockings that I liked. But I picked up a couple of things. I picked up a, a cross-stitch haunted house. Now this, I've already peeked into it because I can. A little noisy. Sorry, sorry. This has embroidery floss. It looks like it's their brand. I don't mind. I'm not a snob. I'll use whatever they have. So it's this pattern and it's count. It's not counted. It's already printed on it. It's um, the X's are quite close to it and everything. So it's going to be interesting on how to figure out how to get it done, but it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Close enough is good enough. So I picked up this because I don't, I love to do cross stitch, but having to take the time to, my eyes have a difficult time. I wear progressive bifocals and I have weak eye muscles, so they can't adjust from close up and distance. So for me to be seeing a pattern and going from cross stitching back to the pattern and back to cross stitching, I have a really difficult time. I can do those cute little ornaments, but the big projects are difficult for me. So I picked this up. Put that out of the way and then I picked up this stocking now this one is needlepoint so it's a needlepoint kit that comes with the yarn I'm going to guess it's wool I haven't opened this one up yet because I don't want to have any issues and it has it all pre-printed by the color can you see all the colors over here I haven't done very much needlepoint because the canvases tend to be very expensive but these kits were really reasonably well priced Plus they had them on sale, so it was great. So I picked this up too. I am not opening up anything and I'm putting them away because I have other things that I have to finish first, like my Santa Claus and stuff like that. And I still have that haunted house quilt that I'm gonna start working on again. But they're smart because they're a smart company and they also included all about the felt collection. So they have all their different stockings and felt ornaments and all that kind of fun in here. So I'm going to be like a child 
and I'm going to take my little Sharpie marker, like a red one or something, and I'm going to circle which ones I want to put on my wish list because I have a lot of fun things in here. And I realized that while I'll use any fabric, I'm a bit, hello, hello, I'm a bit pickier when it comes to the stockings. Like, I love this Santa Claus here. Let me see if you guys can see it. He has, you know, your basic red jolly Santa and he's got his beard and everything. But what I don't like is that it has the little deer and the bunnies in it. So I'm like, okay, I'm too picky. I like this one. And then I saw some snowman ones, and let me see if I can find the one I was talking to you guys about. Okay, this one is fun. So you got see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. And I like your basic snowmen, right? So they're really cute. Oh, and I've learned that I say right an awful lot. I guess that's right up there with the people that say um. My apologies. But they have some really cute ones. I mean, this snowman here is in the pinks and the purples like everyone likes. Okay, so here's the Mrs. Claus one, I mean, the Mrs. Snowman. See how she has like a kerchief on her head? And I, I just don't like that. They have other ones that they have stocking caps on, like knit caps, and I like those. I thought those were really cute. So yeah, I'm gonna go through and I'm going to make little marks on it. This one's all sequins and decide which ones I'm gonna put on my wish list. And then I'll just keep an eye out for any type of sales going on. They've got a mermaid. And then they have a little fall selection. They have this fun, now these just go like up against the wall. They're kind of flat, but puffy a little bit, if it makes sense. So they have that, and then they have, I'm really into haunted houses. So they have this fun haunted house. They got the witch's feet sticking out of it and everything. So they're really cute. And I thought this was fun too. The North Pole with the different signs and everything. So I thought, okay, they're good marketing department. Very good because this is gonna go on to, I'm gonna put it in a safe spot and I'm gonna put different things on my wish list. And throughout the year, if I feel like I have a little extra money or I, there's a good sale and I just wanna stock up on something, I'll go ahead and pick it up. They have lots of deals where if you buy the stocking and the ornaments together, you could save $5. So I'm just gonna keep an eye out, especially for their clearance section, because I really don't like to pay full price. I like to find things on sale. Hello, hello, everyone that's popping in. Let me just put this stuff away, and then we'll go ahead and get started on working on our cozies. I really enjoy that type of handwork. I love working at the sewing machine and everything, but I really do enjoy working on, just sitting down and doing a little hand sewing and working with my hands like that. I made some cozies already. got fuzzies in them okay I started just playing around with some of them and I so I worked on a few yesterday I have a couple more cut out that I want to finish up I wanted to see if there was any little extra tips and tricks that I should share with you guys and different ways to do these and anything that might be special and I found that this is such a simple clear-cut project that if we just pay attention to a couple little details if we even care about how things may be off a little bit, if we just pay attention, then it's gonna be a super simple project and it's really easy for anyone. So this is one of those projects that you can do with the grandkids. You can do it as a beginner sewist. So we're just hitting 12 noon. We're gonna wait just a couple more minutes. I cleared off a whole bunch of stuff over here and now I've got dust flying. Well. Technically, I don't think it's really dust if it's coming from like the sewing machine and the fabric and the batting and stuff. That's more like just fuzz. Do we have anyone here that is in the Northeast and New England states that got hit with all that snow? I was watching a few people on Instagram and they have fuzzies, yes, fuzzies, fuzzies. And they had the, the snow look like really fluffy. I watched this one girl on Instagram 
Give Me Yarn 419, I believe it is. And she just flopped into the snow, like three foot of snow, and it just sucked her right in, and it all went poof. It looked like the fake snow from the movies. It was just so fluffy, fluffy. <gasps> Yay, Sue! Sue's grandson won his match, and he's going to go on to another one. See, in plenty of time, now you can hang out with us, with us for a little bit until he's ready for his next one. Carol, do you ever get snow in Arizona? Cold Kentucky, yes. My hands, I have, this is one of the, what is this? This is a, hold on, one of those things that, a scrub. I When I worked at the hospital, I was a housekeeper, and we had to wear scrubs, so I have a scrub jacket. And it's it's a scrub material, but I love how long the cuffs are, and it's it's lightweight, so I can wear it almost like just an overshirt. Because right now, my hands and my nose are freezing cold. It's nice outside. It's supposed to get up into the upper 70s later this afternoon. It's probably around 69 now, I think. I don't know. But in my house, it's much colder. Ten and a half inches. A wet and heavy. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've had snow a couple times even this far down south in Florida in the past 40 years. I think I've seen snow twice here. We had one major ice freeze back in the 80s. If you're in a snow area, I think you really kind of want to have snow for Christmas time. I think if you don't have any snow at Christmas, it's just, it doesn't feel right. I mean, down here, we just want cold weather. And I think on Christmas Day, it's going to be in like upper 70s, 79 again. And then it's going to get cold the day after or something like that. Cold for us. I've actually had the heat on in the morning in the last couple mornings. I kind of, I don't need to heat much at night. I like to just snuggle up and quilt. But during the morning when I first get up and before I hop in the shower and everything, I like to make the house nice and toasty warm. I figure I can go ahead and run the heat for just an hour or two in the mornings. It's not that big of a deal. Put something in front of me and I'm going to play with it. But all right, we're up ready. It's what, 12.03. We'll go ahead and get started and start working on these. Before we get into it, I had a question earlier this morning or yesterday, yesterday I think it was. And if we could make, if I knew how to make a plate cozy the same way as the bowl cozy. I put links down below in the description box of this video. I carried some over from yesterday and I put a new one that I found about plate cozies. Now she said to measure the plate and add two and a half inches. So I measured my plate and my plate measures just a little over 10 inches. So I made my fabric, I made it 13 inches, but as you can see, it really doesn't quite hold the plate very well. And I was wondering if maybe it was from the way I did the darts, cause she said to go down with the darts two and three quarters inches. I went two and a half like I did with the bowls. Yeah, clear water's not too far from me. But it just wasn't enough. So I think maybe you would probably need more like five inches extra. You can always test it out and stuff and then just trim it down if you have too much. You know what I'm saying? Before you spin it all around and you'll see where we're at in a certain spot But after you make each section you can test it out before it's completely finished But for my my ten and a half inch plate going up to 13 inches just wasn't enough Yeah, I, I never thought about putting a plate So I didn't have time to try again with a larger size this morning, but I think Again, I like to do things with either paper or just old fabric that means nothing to me, like something that maybe is stained or an old sheet. That's what I was wondering, Becky. I might have to read it again, but there's a link down below. I just skimmed it really quick, and I gave the person that link and said, you know, hey, this is what I found real quick. She's, a, she's also, I believe she also has a YouTube channel that a lot of people like. So that's what I'm thinking, because after I got it all together and put my plate in, and I thought, well... It's not too bad on the sides here, but it's it's about an inch, three quarters of an inch shy on these sides. And I know it was a square when I started and all. You know, you can't put a round peg in a square hole, they say. 
So that's what I'm thinking. That's where we're at right now. I'll play with it again later on. I don't know if I'll have time this afternoon or something. But if you really need it for a plate, I say go five inches larger, two and a half inches all the way around and see if that helps. As I said, I skimmed the, the blog post really quick and I bet it would have to be yeah, I bet it would have to be around each side and not just that. It's, that's what I get for going really quick and not double checking it this morning and reading it when I was half asleep. But we are not going to make plate cozies today. We are going to make bowl cozies. And once you learn the technique, it'll be really easy to go ahead and upsize it. I didn't do any of the rounded corner ones. I thought today we would go ahead and do some of these that have just the, the little points. They almost look like flower petals to me, and it's probably because I've been using flower fabric. But we're gonna do, the first one we're gonna do with the points like this, and then we'll go ahead and I will do a rounded one. So in case you wanna have just a popcorn bowl and you don't wanna have it for your regular bowl. Before we get started, here is your disclaimer. Every part of this needs to be 100% cotton. It can't be anything else. There's a special batting that you can use that's called wrap and zap, or you can just use 100% cotton. I have 100% cotton batting, and I have 100% cotton fabric. If you don't know that your items are 100% cotton, do not use them. Find something or purchase something new that you know is 100% cotton. My thread is 100% cotton. If you put this into the microwave and it has that, you know, we can use that special heat one to do pot holders, that has metal in it. Your microwave can possibly 99.9% .9 chance that it's going to catch on fire. You do not want anyone's microwave or house to catch on fire because you made them a bowl cozy. If there's any chance at all that someone's going to put this in the microwave, do not use anything but 100% cotton. And if you choose to try something different, you're taking that chance all on your own. It is against what I'm telling you and what every other piece of information on YouTube and on the internet that says. So we're just going to use 100% cotton, no scrim. If you have any scrim in it, yep, see Becky just popped that up. If you have any scrim in it, that scrim is like a, a glue, a fiberglassy type thing. You can't use that either. This is all needle punched batting. Your batting package will tell you. If I only use 100, this is the only batting I use. I do have some polyester that people have given me and it's really poofy so you know the difference. I do not use 80-20 so I know that every little piece of batting in my house is 100% cotton no scrim. If you don't know, then it might be better to go ahead and just pick up one of those little packages. You can buy like a craft size or a baby size quilt size at Joann's for a good price. Use your 40% coupon or buy it on sale. You really don't want your gift to cause some type of a damage, okay? I think we've talked about that enough. Now let's go ahead and move on to this project. I have set up for two bowls, so let me just separate out my stuff, because as I said, we're going to make a rounded version, and we're going to make the regular version. I picked all blue stuff so I don't have to worry about changing my thread. I'm using a blue thread so that it matches this blue specifically. You can go ahead and use any color thread you want. If you want it to, this one here. I use a dark brown, excuse me a second, <coughs> I have fuzzies in my throat. This dark brown really pops. The batting package should say scrim on it. I know that when I, when I purchase mine, it does say, you know, when I look at them online, it'll say that it has scrim in it. My packaging says 100% batting. I purchased scrim once, I no longer have the package and I no longer have that batting so I couldn't tell you 100% what it says, but it should say scrim on it if it is. If it doesn't say 100% cotton, then I would say it has something else in it. So I have the dark brown thread showing and then I decided I don't really care for that so I use like the green that matches, but I didn't want to change my thread again. It doesn't really matter, it all depends on the look you're going for. You'll have to excuse me, like I said, it's fuzzy in here. To make one bowl cozy, I am using a, my bowl 
is six inches in diameter across. These cozies will fit a variety of size bowls. Mine fits in there nicely with a little bit of room. It's still nice and sturdy. You can have one that's a little bit wider or a little bit smaller. The sides will just kind of come in a little bit more if it's a smaller bowl. So I think the 10 inches seems to be the universal that everyone chose online and in the videos. I've watched a ton of videos and read several blog posts and everyone is basically doing the same thing. There isn't much variance at all. There's just whether you draw the lines or you eyeball it. So I have my two pieces of batting, 10 inches square, and I have two pieces of fabric, both 10 inches square. You can use the same fabric. You can use, you can use two stripes, two novelties, two polka dots, whatever you want. I just love that they are reversible. So if you're not sure if someone's going to like sunflowers, then you can go ahead and just put green on the other side. There's a good chance they'll enjoy the green, right? If your machine doesn't like to go through thick layers, when we get to this point and we're sewing all the way around the edges, you're going through a lot of layers. My machine has no problem. It just makes a little bit extra noise because it's going through all of that. But if you have just maybe a very basic machine, like maybe one of those cute little Hello Kitty ones and it doesn't like all that thickness, go ahead and make your square instead of 10 inches, I would go at nine and a half. That way there won't be much of anything in your seam allowance. You can even go down a little bit smaller depending on how much seam allowance you sew. The cooking fabric was, where's my cooking fabric? The cooking fabric was sent to me as a gift from one of my subscribers. It is, I believe it's a timeless treasures. I do not know how old it is because this person liked to collect novelty fabric. So it could have been something new or it could have been something she's had for 10 years. I'm not sure, but I would check timeless treasures online. If there's any salvage left on it, she saved some of her salvages and I also saved mine. So if there's any salvages left on it, I will go ahead and look it up for you. Let's see who wants to know. Kathy? And kitchen fabric salvage name. Okay, if I don't write, you know, if I don't write it down, it doesn't exist. Okay, so make your batting just a little bit shorter, whether it's a half an inch or three quarters of an inch, and that way it won't all be in your seam allowance here. We're gonna go ahead and quilt this so it will hold it in place. Plus you can use a whole bunch of pins. You're welcome, Kathy. You can use a whole bunch of pins and stuff like that. I bought kits for the baked potato bag six or so years ago and gave them as gifts. My mom had a fire in her mouth. Yeah, I heard that, that some people were having that. And I wonder, did you buy a kit from like a person or from like a company? Because you got to wonder sometimes if they're using the wrong, if the batting has any scrim in it. I've heard a lot of people have realized that after it caught on fire, it's because there was scrim in their batting. They did everything right. They, they had cotton batting, cotton fabric, cotton thread, but... You see, I wonder, Sue, if they were just making their own kits and maybe they used the wrong thing. And another thing, if you don't want to mess with the size of your batting, you can always just go ahead and hand sew the opening close because we're going to do that turn and flip thing. Or you can put a little bit of that heat tape that you can just put the iron on it and it closes up that way. This is just a decorative stitch around the edge. It kind of gives it that nice finished look. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. So if it's difficult for you, just go ahead and skip it. If you wash this, it's, it's going to be like this anyways. There's nothing like tacked in to hold the pieces together. So I think it's not, it's not like a bag or anything. It's just something that makes it look nice. So whatever works for you, if you have to adjust things like that, you're going to be fine. It'll be okay. Now I'm going to give you directions and this is going to be basically the same thing you're going to use for any size, even including the bigger plate ones or for bigger bowls. I'm just looking around for my ruler. What you want to do, I have to stand up for this, sorry. What we're going to do is we're going to make some marks on this and we're going to find some of the halfway points. My square is 10 inches, so I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to line it up at the five inch mark. 
I'm just using your regular old basic Bic. I think you can get away with just about anything that you can draw on your batting with. I wouldn't use like a Sharpie. A couple of the people say that whatever fabric color you're using, you should go ahead and use that to draw on your batting, but it's going to be on the wrong side. And when I draw with this pen, let me just show you. It doesn't go all the way through to the other side. So if I was using a white fabric, it's not going to show up in any of these white spots at all. I just make sure you don't use something. I had tried I had tried a, fa a pen similar to this, one of these these rollerball ones that the ink kind of stays wet for a while. This is not a good idea because it gets on your ruler and it gets squished all over the batting and it just makes a mess. So I would skip anything like that. Just your basic pen or any type of thing that you use a marking tool for when you're doing quilts or something. The air erasable, the frictions and all that. So I've done it, marked my halfway this way. I'm going to spin it this way. I'm going to mark halfway on this one. Now I'm going to mark my two squares differently just to show you guys different ways to do it. On this one, what I want to do is I'm going to draw my lines from corner to corner. But if you want, you can go ahead and just, you're going to see where my line is not going to match up in the center. My square might not be perfectly square. I did give it a little iron so it could have gotten a little off, but it's close enough. This is going to be our sewing lines on the diagonal, but you can eyeball it. I did make a few where I just left this blank and I eyeballed it and it was not a problem. If you're just starting out and you're a beginner sewer, you might want to draw those lines. Can you guys see? Yeah, you can see those pretty well. Now on our regular plus size right here, we'll call this the X and we'll call this the cross. So on our cross, we need to make some marks to make our darts. My square is 10 inches, and that's going to work for your average soup bowl or cereal bowl, ice cream bowl. You can make it larger or smaller. I put a link down below in yesterday's description box and today's where a lady had mentioned something about a 14 inch, 12 inch, different size squares and different measurements for that. I used the same things when I made the one for the plate. I used the same type of markings for my darts. I don't think it's going to matter too much, but you can always just make one quick, simple, scrappy one and see how it works up. Maybe keep that as a, as a bowl for popcorn or chips or something if it doesn't work and then adjust it for the next one. Now on our cross, I want to go down two and a half inches and just make a little, a little dot, a little line. And then up at the edge, I want to mark one inch on either side of that line. I will pick it up and put it closer to the camera in a minute. I'm going to put my pen on the dot down here at the two and a half inch mark, line my ruler up so I can connect this. And this is how we're going to make our dart. Oops, sorry. So I went down two and a half inches and I made a mark at one inch and then one inch. And then I just took my ruler and I connected those. And I found that this line right down the center is really helpful. I guess you could if you wanted to, I don't know how much time it's gonna save if you go ahead and finger press it or something like that. I find that it was very useful to have this line and I'll show you when we get over to sewing it. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. If you want, you can go ahead and make a, let's say you're going to make 50 of these for whatever, a banquet or something like that, the kids' spaghetti dinner. You can make yourself a little template. I've seen people where they cut out the cardboard. And you can go ahead and either just mark your spot for your darts or you can cut out that little triangle for it. That way you can just lay it down and just trace it around like that really quick. I didn't, I didn't find that it was that big of a deal and it didn't take that much more time to do this. But I also didn't make 50 of them. Hi Maria, welcome, welcome. We're making bowl cozies today. So I've done that at all four points. Is everybody with me? We're good? 
I'm going to take my second one, and when I do this one, I'm just going to go ahead and make my cross, and I'm going to skip the X. This one that we're making is the one that's going to have the pointy handles. We started with a 10 inch square, so I'm marking it at the 5 inch mark. I'm going to skip my diagonal on this one, but I'm still going to go down two and a half inches. You could also, if you wanted to, fold this in half. I found it just easy to mark it like I did the first one. You can fold it in half and I can take my ruler and put it at the two and a half inch mark here and then one inches up. I can make a little mark there and a mark there. The way you're going to save time is you're just going to leave it folded like this. You're not going to have to draw the second line. Because when we sew it, we're going to fold it just like that. But like I said, I just found it easy and I liked having it to where I could see both lines and I can line it up when I go to sew. It doesn't have to be super precise. If your bowl cozy is just a little bit wonky, it's really not going to matter that much. You may have some issues if you choose, like this one is a directional print. So when we do this one, when we fold it and we sew it, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have it looking weird when it comes up like this. But that doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't know if it would bother too many. Oh, that would be fun for little girls playing house. Or you can just make small ones for like little bowls of M&Ms. You put wrap candy in it. If you're making a little one and you know you're just going to use it in your craft room, you can go ahead and put some type of a, a stabilizer or an interfacing on the back of it or use that foam inside here and then you can make an actual little bowl out of it. I think that would be really cute with the rounded edges. And then you could have something like this but in the bowl shape to go ahead and put whatever it is you want in your craft room. Most of these projects, if you just think on it a little bit, you could probably make five or six or 12 different things from the same beginner pattern. A little bit traffic-y out there today. Sorry about any noise. Now, I'm not a big proponent of pinning, but I am going to pin. I have my fabric right sides down. And I'm going to layer my batting on top. And I'm going to make sure my marks are face up so I can see them. And I would just go ahead, let me show you on this one. I would put my pins in a place where I'm not going to be sewing. I'm going to sew on the X on the diagonals, and I'm going to sew on these darts. So I'm just going to put a couple pins in here just to hold it. Something I was pinning right on the lines before and they just kept, I had to keep pulling the pins out so it took me a while. Yeah Jody, I think that would be really good. You can use it for a variety of things. I mean I have different bowls I've tried. Like I have this one when I was practicing it before I tried it with the foam. And I, I like to have little bowls in my area. I like to have little small ones and larger ones. I am saving the little cutoffs that I do and I've been putting it in a little ice cream container because we cut out this little piece of fabric here after we sew it. So I thought these are nice fun little triangles or pyramids. I'm going to do something fun with that. I'm not going to throw those away. So we pin that. Let me pin this one. It doesn't really take a lot of pins. Stephanie has a curfew. She has to be, she, I'm sorry for laughing. You have to be home, what time? 8 p.m.? Yeah. I mean, I, I understand, but my parents used to, when I was like 17 years old, my father was really strict and he gave me a 9 p.m. curfew. And I'm like, Dad, why did you give me such an early curfew? Why can't I stay out till 11, 12 o'clock? He says, because if you stay out till 11 or 12 o'clock, you could do something bad. You know, if you go out with a boy, you can do, mm-hmm. 
not going to say that word, or you can also go out drinking. So I used to tell him, I said, Dad, don't worry, because I'm going to do that at 2 o'clock in the afternoon before we ever go out. And he just rolled his eyes at me. So I don't, curfew is just, I never really too big on a curfew. I think if you trust everyone, then... So if you have an 8 p.m. curfew, does that mean nobody is going to be in larger groups during the daytime? Like they're not going to go out for dinner at 5 o'clock with 30 of their best friends? They're only going to do it after 8 p.m.? Yeah, I mean, it is the most thing is to stay safe. I just always, I think it's human nature for a lot of us just to like dig in our heels and be argumentative. What do you mean I can't do this? I want to do it. Even if I didn't want to do it, I still want to do it. Okay, so let me move things around here a little. I'm going to slide my sewing machine over. Thank you again to the person that said, hey, just put it on a mat and you can slide it. You don't have to lift it. Oh, everything's locked down. Yeah, so you're not going to be doing too much anyways, right? Okay, let me... I removed... Is, is you, are you guys going to be able to see enough like that? Or do you prefer that I move the camera down so you can see right at it? Are we going to be okay here? Hi, Lorianne. So just let me know before I get started, is everyone okay with me sewing right here? Will you be able to see? Somebody made this for me many, many years ago. It's from a doll quilt swap. View is good. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure anyone who needs to see can see. This is a doll quilt swap that was over on Flickr, probably back in like 2005, 2008, 2002, whatever. And you would make a quilt and you would send it to one person, and another person would make a quilt and send it to you. And it didn't, you didn't send it to the same person, and you just never knew what you were going to get. You'd put a little mosaic up of the things you like, and then someone would just send you something really fun. It was really great. And there was no stress to it because you only sent the mini quilt and maybe one item, like a chocolate bar or something. You weren't allowed to send extras. So there was no pressure on people that were maybe in a monetary shipping issue. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew that big X. Just whatever stitch allowance you usually do. Not whatever whatever yeah whatever length of stitch you normally do when you're sewing through a little piece of batting and stuff like that mine automatically goes to 2.4 when I put it in the center if your point is going to get sucked down like you have problems I have problems with that every now and then you can get a piece of scrap fabric I lost my scrap fabric somewhere oh here it is I emptied out my trash can and I don't have any scraps. So I just have this little piece of fabric that I can put underneath there. You can put a leader ender. I always called these spiders because all the thread looks like legs. The mat also helps a little bit with the noise of the sewing machine, not a lot. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch on this diagonal. I want to make sure that my fabric and my batting corners are lined up so when I stitch right on that line it's going to go right out through the center of the corner. It's not a huge deal but if it bothers you if things aren't lined up perfectly that's probably hard to see but this one has a gray thread that comes off and it comes out right here so it doesn't come right out at the corner. And you know me I'm not picky about much of anything but that bothered me. Here we go, watch your ears. Oh, that's not too bad at all. I think I might even be able to talk over it today. Someone was very helpful and told me that she has the same machine as I, and I mentioned on the last live stream that if I don't put my foot in the right spot, the pedal doesn't work very well. She said it's not me, thankfully, it's the actual pedal. So when I take it in to get its maintenance and cleaning done next year, I'll go ahead and mention that and either have to, I don't know if it's still under warranty enough to get a new pedal or I'll just have to purchase this one. 
Now remember, I don't have any lines here. Do you have a walking? Yes, I have a walking foot for my machine. I have to take it off and put it on. The thing is, I did do that on a few of them and it didn't make that much of a difference that it looks, as I'm sewing with this machine, it looks like everything's getting all wrinkled and crinkled up, but once it's done, it, it actually smooths out when it gets to the foot and everything, and I don't have any issues with it. So here's my walking foot. So I'd have to take the screw and take it all off and put it on, and I use it for some things when I'm doing straight line quilting, but for this, I found that I just didn't like it. So I'm going to go ahead and ouch pin, poke myself with a pin. I'm going to start stitching right on this corner. I'm doing, you'll have to excuse me, I haven't really slept much in several days. I'm doing chain stitching, that's what I'm doing. And what I do is I lean back a little bit, you probably won't be able to see me, but I hold the corner up, make sure everything's good. I kind of lean back a little bit and I don't pull on it and I just let it sag a little bit and I aim right for here. It's going to cross in the center. We're only doing two lines, so it's not that big of a deal. Plus, your bowl is going to be in inside it, so it won't be seen. And then when I get closer and I get about halfway into this little square here, I'll kind of peek and make sure I'm on track, and I'll just aim for my finger. And that'll save you a little bit of time if you feel comfortable doing that. I understand that, Carol, and I had tried it and stuff, but you know what? I just liked putting this little piece of fabric on. Normally, I don't have to. I don't really have too many problems with it getting sucked in, but because it's just this little corner there, it just caused me issues. So I just went and I unclipped. I took my little clippers, and I undid this one, and I'm going to spin it around, and I'm going to sew the X in the other direction. And... For whatever reason, when you're already connected to something, it just doesn't suck in. Plus, you can give it a little bit of a guidance. Again, I still lean back. Now, without my walking foot, it does cause just a little bit of a, a little tuck or a little fold here. But I double checked, and it's only in the batting, and it's not in my fabric below. And it doesn't, you can't feel it. You won't notice it there, so I don't worry about it. Not every machine has a walking foot or they're very expensive and people just don't have them. And then I need to do my other diagonal on this one. This is like my organic quilting, my straightish lines when I'm doing them on bags and mini quilts and stuff. So we've done our X and that is it. Now if you want, you can go ahead and sew the cross going this way. I did try it and then I was like, you know what, it didn't make any difference. It didn't help it lay any flatter. It's, let me see one. So this one you have it and it's kind of, all the bowls I've seen, all the cozies are always just kind of a little bit fluffy because they're not quilted down. And then this one. I went ahead and I stitched the cross part and I don't think it really made that much of a difference except you have this little bit of extra quilting right here at the bottom of your cozy. So you can save yourself some time and thread and just go with the X. You don't need to do the extra. In my opinion, whatever works for you and makes you comfortable. Hello, Vicki. Hey, you made it. You're not too late. We haven't even gotten too far, and we're going to make one more after this anyways. The next one will go a bit quicker because we won't have to do all the chitter-chatter and explaining things. Now we're going to go ahead and do the darts. Again, we're going to work from our batting side where it's marked. We have our line that goes straight here, and we have these two markings here. I'm going to fold it so it's right sides together on my fabric side. And if I fold it right on this line and I line up my corners, then I can just take it right here and stitch. You can double check if you look right here 
and kind of look there and make sure those points are touching. If you're doing a whole bunch of these, what I like to do is I went ahead and I put a clip on it and then I go over to this one and I fold it on the line, make sure everything's lined up, peaky peaky, and then I put a clip on it. And that way I can go ahead and assembly line a whole bunch of them and it goes really super quick. Does that make sense to anyone? Should I stop and redo it and go a little slower or do you guys understand this dart? I'm gonna sew it in one second and tell you more information. And while you're catching up to me, I'm gonna get a little drink. I hate listening to people drink on video, so I'm really sorry, but otherwise I get too dry. Okay, so if nobody has any questions, now when we get to this point, we wanna make sure we backstitch at the beginning and the end, because that's gonna be very important, especially this part here, because this part here is right here. Now granted, it's going to be on the inside, but there's nothing that's going to stop it from going through the washer and having those threads come undone. So you definitely need the backstitch. If you wanna skip the backstitching at the top, you know, that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. I just got used to when I do darts for clothes or for bags, I just go ahead and do it all. So I'm gonna sew this one, backstitch, and I'm gonna sew right down. And when I get towards the end, before I get off the fabric, I'll backstitch a little bit. It's maybe one or two stitches from the end. So you were too busy watching the wrestling, you missed that part. Yes, when you're marking these, you can just go ahead and fold your batting in half and just mark one half, whatever half you're gonna sew from and do that. I'm just like, I like to be able to match this side up with this side just to make sure that everything's lined up. And that's just for me, but you can do that. You were just at the wrestling match and you missed it. Now when you're done here, you can go ahead and cut your thread and then you can rotate it around and do the next one or you can go ahead and chain piece. And I usually go ahead and chain piece. It's just, I wanted you to see it ahead of time. Oh, and Sue understands my little snarkiness. So if it sounds like I'm being mean to her, it's okay, she understands. Right, Sue? We'll let her go though, because her grandson won his match. So hey, I just kind of, you know, push this out of the way and I take my next one. And if I had already put all the clips on it, I wouldn't have to take this time to do this. Line it all up so I can just peeky peeky a little to make sure. If it's off, is it a big deal? No. As long as it's sort of kind of almost in the center, you're going to be perfectly fine. I'm only doing two, so I do have to stop and cut the thread here. And I just work my way around. Line up my corners, line up my line here. And really, if you want, you if you got a good eye at this stuff, you can just eyeball it and figure, okay, for me, I know all of us, our tip of our finger, unless we've cut it off accidentally, is going to be one inches long. So you can just go ahead there and eyeball the next part. I know a lot of people can eyeball inches. I have a problem with distances and I can't eyeball that. Just be careful you don't cut anything while you're trimming them off. And then you're gonna do all eight of them. So you guys chit chat and I will just go ahead and speed through these. Sometimes I have to lay it down and just make sure that this fabric, especially, I don't know, these blender ones always wanted to get all messed up at all. 
again, it's not that big of a deal. People are going to be too interested in what's in the bowl than what the cozy looks like. Somehow I got off. That's your problem, Jody. You have holiday sewing. I just have no holiday sewing. Now we need to trim off this excess here. I'm going to trim it off on the outside of the darts on, so that this piece comes off about a quarter of an inch. It doesn't need to be perfect. You just want to get rid of that extra bulk. You don't need to have that laying in there. And that's where I ended up with those triangles that I'm going to turn into a project. Just trim all these off. Just be careful you don't trim into that stitching line. If you do, you can always just sew a new one. It'll just be a little different. Like this one, okay, so I didn't hit it exactly. It didn't even get on my line. I'm on my line that side. I don't know, something happened. Not that big of a deal. Oh, sewing mess. I really need to sew myself a few more masks. I say that every week and I just never do it because I don't wanna. I'll save those for later. One of these I wanna turn right sides out. I'm gonna put these right sides together and I'm going to match up my little darts here. I'm gonna put one seam allowance to one way and the other to the other so that I'm nesting the seam. It's just gonna help me so I'm not sewing through, what, two, four, six layers of batting. I'm gonna put clips or pins all the way through here. Vicki, you're getting a little late for Christmas cards. Can you see how my batting is sticking out a little bit? I'm gonna trim that off because when I go to stitch everything around, it's gonna be an issue. If I'd have used my walking foot like Carol said I should, I wouldn't have had this problem possibly, but cotton batting does have a bit of stretch to it. I don't know about other battings because you know I don't use them. But if I have any pieces that are a little bit sticking out, I learned that it's better to trim it now. I almost forgot. I find satisfaction in this. No, Vicky, because I don't have the I don't have the die for the bowl cozies, and I don't have a ten inch square die, so I just cut them out with my uh, rotary cutter and ruler. There are some companies that have a special die that you can trace around, and I think I did see AccuQuill has a die to cut them out. But will I ever make another bowl cozy after this? I don't know. I may never, so it would be a waste for me to have that die. And it's so simple to draw and mark all the lines that I probably wouldn't purchase a pattern. I think it was Shabby Fabrics maybe that had the batting already cut out for you. Oh, there's one. They had it already cut out for you that had, oh, is it time to go wrestling? All right, Sue, let us know how he did. Good luck. They had a, so it had the curves and everything like that already cut out for you. So you just put your batting right on it and you knew, they told you, you know, it's safe batting so you don't have to worry and blah, 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 but... Hi, is it, is it just Cheryl, like the regular Cheryl? Hi, Cheryl. Mass art, well, you know, mass are a really good gift. Yeah, they do. You know what would also be a good gift is those mass keepers, kind of like, what are those, those, those things you, we can hang your keys or your, your ID badge. I, I told you I, guys, I can't think when I'm not sleeping very well. But I've seen it where they just have like a beaded necklace around it, like an eyeglass keeper. You know how you see like some of the, the, in the shows where you see the elderly woman that's a librarian and she has the glasses that hang around her neck? Yeah, Vicki, but I don't know. You guys know how to make them from seeing this. So why would you buy from me if you can just make your own? It's super simple. 
but they have those beaded necklaces with those little plastic things on it so that it would attach to the mask or it just has the little clips and they can clip it on so when they take their mask off it just hangs around their neck and they don't have to worry about setting it down at school and picking it back up and all that I thought that was lanyard yes I thought that was a brilliant idea I don't know why I can never remember lanyard I had to write dart up on the wall on my calendar so I can remember the word dart certain words just get stuck and I can never remember Laurelyn showed my taco this morning oh those those tacos are adorable aren't they I think I made 12 for her all right so now we're gonna go ahead and stitch around just like when we do our bags and anything else, we're going to need to leave a little bit of an opening. And you want to leave it in one of these straight sections. You're not going to want to really leave it on. We have breakfast tacos on Christmas morning every year. We don't want to try to have our turn spot here. And when we do the curves, we're going to have to be careful. So we want to leave it on one of these straight edges. What I like to do is I like to start sewing just before one of these darts. I am going to go with, I'm going to sew mine at a 3 8 inch stitch allow, seam allowance all the way around. Some people say do a quarter inch, but you're going through four layers of here. And is everything going to be lined up neatly? I have a hard time doing a quarter inch. Things tend to shift and I have to restitch it and fix it. And that just doesn't work for me. Oh, Lynn, carpet cleaning. I was spot cleaning my carpet the other day. I don't, I don't enjoy carpet cleaning, but it has to be done. So I'm going to start just before the dart. I'm going to back stitch. I'm still at a 2.4 stitch length. And then when we get to this little dart, because it has just a slight V, sometimes I have to pivot and other times I can just hold it and it'll go straight and you can just kind of follow along. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh oh, now we're on a taco kick. And I'm going to stitch all the way around and I'm going to leave just a little bit of an opening, a couple inches here. It doesn't take much to turn these out because they're really soft and squishy. A walking foot here would be really good because it does shift, especially when I get to the corners. I can always see where it shifted. I'm not too worried. Nobody's going to pick this up. Well, nobody that I send it to is going to pick this up and say, ooh, the distance from here to here. This one is this one is three and a half inches, and this one is three and a quarter. You're off a little bit. Ooh, Robin messed up. It's just... You're making someone a handmade gift. Just relax and enjoy, you know, what you're making and not worrying about it being absolutely perfect. We're not making flying geese or stars where we need to make sure all the points hit perfectly. I just hold my corner. You can put another pin or clip in the corner just to make sure those match up. The rest of it I find to be not that big of a deal. Red, white, and green tool from Hobby Lobby makes the best ribbon bows for package. Oh. I, I just, I haven't mastered bow making. Exactly, Stephanie. They're not going to get anything else. I received one as a gift. Last year, year before, I'm pretty sure it was 2019, and I use it a lot. I do. I just I don't. I tried it in the mic. Well, I never put it in the microwave because I was nervous. But as I said, I wouldn't want to put it in the microwave anyways. I don't want it to get all messy. A little bit of spilt chili or soup I can spot clean. Otherwise, it has to go in the washer. And 
then when I get to this last part, here's where I started. I'm just going to go maybe an inch or so around the corner, not measuring it, and then I'm going to back stitch. And that leaves me my opening right here. Now what I do is I go ahead and turn it. Oh, chorizo and scrambled eggs is so good with fried. Oh, yep. Barbara Jean, she's just made the best breakfast around. So I'm going to flip it over. This is the side I stitched on. I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to look around to make sure that I caught all of my edges before I flip it. Oh, well, that's a simple way to make the bow. See, you know, a nice bow and you have to, yeah, no. He won again? Oh, awesome. Does he have to wrestle again or is that it for today? If you used a large seam allowance and you notice you have a lot of extra fabric around the edges, you can go ahead and trim it off, trim off a little. And I just go ahead, as I'm going around, I just round my corners. You can clip them off like we usually do like this. But since I'm trimming the seam allowance anyways, I just kind of go around the corner. I leave this whole section, no matter how much fabric is sticking out where I'm turning it, I don't want to trim that at all. Round and round we go. You almost missed it. Wow. It's so cool that they're putting it online so that everyone can see it. It keeps everyone safe, and it, it'll keep most people from wanting to go to the school to see it if they can at least watch it online. Then we're stitched all the way around, left our opening, trimmed it, seam allowance, trimmed the corners. You can usually only get a couple fingers in there unless you're doing a bigger one and just grab what you can and pull it out slowly. Since we backstitched at the beginning and the end, then we don't have to worry too much. Just slowly pull it out. Find something that has a rounded edge. You guys know I like to do my crochet hook. And I just want to pop out my corners. There's one right here where the opening is. They're a little bit hard to find. Chopstick, an unsharpened pencil with the eraser end, that works too. Oh yeah, you can just sit at home on your couch and not have to sit on those bleachers. You can take this over to your iron and give it a nice press. What I end up doing when I press it is I put it like this at the corner and I make this part flat so that I can just go ahead and put my iron in there. I do like to take my little edges here and press them in, but it's okay also. You just have a bit of batting in there. I'm going to put a clip on it because I always end up losing that spot. Just make sure everything is pulled out as much as you can. You can gently be careful if you're doing it this way. Use your little seam ripper and pull out any corners. If your corners are rounded there, it is not that big of a deal. Now that sounds good. Slow cookers and pork is always really good. Now our next step is we're going to stitch all the way around. We're going to close up that hole. Now for this one, as I'm going to do the eighth of an inch, I take my stitch allowance, my, my stitch length, and I bring it up to about a 2.8 or a 3.0 because we're going through so many layers. Oh, Barbara Jean, congratulations. That's awesome. Give yourself that little bit extra. If you really, a really tight short stitch length, like if you were sewing a quilt block, it just makes it that much harder to go through all of these layers. And it just, sometimes it does something a little weird and draws things in and stuff, but a 2.8 or a 3.0 works fine. Just make sure everything's in there nice. A little back stitch, and I'm gonna stitch around. This is noisy. Just go slow when you get to your corners. I have my fingers on it so that I can gently kind of guide it through if it gets stuck when I go around the corner. Make sure your fabric, when you get to your darts, it's all smoothed out 
away from that area and there's nothing underneath to get in the way. Sometimes this fabric might want to creep around or something. Just pay attention to it. This is the thickest part, so you might have to go slow. Some machines you might have to take the little hand crank and do that. Uh-oh, Lynn found him. When someone loses weight, someone else always ends up getting it, right? Where's my thread? There it is. When I was stitching, this morning I think it was when I was stitching another bowl, or yesterday when I was stitching a bowl, I didn't realize that I was out of bobbin thread like this far into it, I stitched around the entire cozy twice because I kept thinking, wow, I should be coming back to the beginning soon. I feel like I've been stitching around this too many times. I stitched around it twice with zero bobbin thread. Like, okay, that's enough. Time to quit for the day. They just kind of move that out of the way. Sometimes you have to stop and pivot, and sometimes you can just move it a little bit with your hands. If you hand stitch the closing by, you know, if you close it up by hand, or you use that little tape that you can put in there that you, you iron it down, you could always go further in so that you're past all that extra batting and stuff like that from the seam allowance. Or as I said, just skip this step altogether. Ooh, that scared me. And then backstitch. Right, Becky, it's just crazy. I, I, you think, I had a brother sewing machine. It was a Disney brother that did embroidery and sewing. If you've been here for a while, you guys have seen it. It had a little plastic ramp. I loved that machine. When your bobbin got low, it'd go beep, 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 and it would stop, and it'd come up on the little screen and tell you that you're out of bobbin. It could be a little annoying because it would happen even if you weren't out of bobbin. You were just close to the end. But this machine, it's a juki, it's fancy, all the bells and whistles, and it doesn't tell me when I'm out of bobbin thread. That just drives me crazy. Okay. Make sure I'm not dropping anything on the floor. That's it. There's your bowl cozy. You can, again, take it over to the iron and just kind of do this. Give it some nice steam and everything. There's my bowl. It'll fit a little bit of a bigger bowl and a little bit of a smaller bowl and it'll be perfectly fine. Do you guys want me to stop here or do you want to see me do the little curvy corners? Corners, please. Okay, we will do the corners if even just one person wants corners. I'm getting a little warm. Let me shed my little jacket here. I want to make one just like this blue scrub top, but I want to make it in t-shirt material. I think it'd be really nice and cozy. I don't mind. I've got nothing planned. I was planning on hanging out and doing this for a bit today. We're going to do the same exact thing, all the same info, blah, 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 100% cotton, 10 inch squares, two batting, two fabric. This one we're doing a fun little alphabet. I thought it might be cute to have it for a little kid. Let me find my ruler. I'm in a small room and yet I can still manage to lose everything. Just yell at the machine and release eggs. Boy, the bowls my sister made us don't look like those. They have lots of wrinkles. But yeah, see, the wrinkles really bothered me, Vicki. I don't really like, I don't like how loose it is. I thought 
Maybe I might make one just for myself and free motion quilt it. And that way it'll get rid of all of this loose stuff. But I wouldn't want to do that for the shop. That's like too much work. <laughs> Sue, you're funny. Yeah, curvy like all of us, right? Let's make a curvy bowl. So let's start out. Let me just get through our regular stuff here. I didn't want to pre-mark anything just so that you guys can see it again. Go halfway that way, five inches, because it's a 10 inch square. If you're making a 12 inch square, then you're gonna do it at six inches. I'm not gonna draw the diagonals. My grandmother, do you guys remember back, way back, they had like beer cozies so that you put your can of beer or soda in one of those little cozy things. I think they still have them, of course, but they were really popular back in the 80s and 90s. My grandmother had one that said, I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. And I've seen them too where it says, I'm not fat, I'm just short for my weight. I think if all of the numbers at the doctors are good and it says that you're healthy, then it is what it is. Some of us are, we're all just made a little differently and we all look a little different and all that. Connie Gray, you made over 35 of them for Christmas. They are super quick and easy, aren't they? I hadn't made one before. I just never thought of one. And then when I received one, I thought, oh, I really like it. I used to just put a pot holder because I tend to eat either on a TV tray or just sitting up in my recliner chair. And I would just put a pot holder and hold it that way or let it sit on the arm of my chair. I never thought about a bowl cozy, but I'm like, I really like the bowl cozy idea. So if you guys have any questions about any of this, think of it now. Type them out. Before we get going, I can go ahead and do my best to answer any questions you may have. I do have to mark all the same things again. Sue Smith, you weren't here for it before, but what we did is we folded our batting like this. I have this little, what is this? This is two and a half inches by six and a half inches. And you can lay it down so that it's at the two and a half inch mark and you're one inch up. You can just mark right here and mark right there. And then just connect the dots. And then when you sew, you're all set. You won't have to worry about marking the other one. And then you just spin it this way. And you're going to do the same exact thing. Two and a half inches down, one inch is over. Mark it. And draw the line. I've seen many pictures over the years of people where they, they have these bowls. Like, you see stacks of them like this. And I like how you can stack them like this so that they alternate their little points like a little flower petal. They're like, I made 10 bowl cozies. I made 15 of them. Becky, you're fluffy too. <laughs> and she was a, the fluffy one. I'm fluffy. Yep, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. So we'll do it Sue's way. See if it says there's any time. I mean, if the less lines you're drawn, I mean, we didn't draw the diagonal to save us some time, right? So why not? And then flip it over here. You just have to, you might have to flip it around when you're sewing to make sure you're sewing from the right spot, I guess. You can start here and sew to the outside if you want. It doesn't really matter. When I first started sewing and I was watching the different, I was sewing like A-line dresses for girls and stuff like that. And they're like, you have to do things this way. Some of them, clothing people are worse than the quilt police. All right, so we have, everything's the same so far. We've done all the same markings, all the same lines. Now, here's the thing. What are you gonna do? We need to find something that's round. I'm just going to use my bowl since I have it. I have my bowl. I have the lid from my ice cream. It all depends on how much of a curve you want on it. I'll use my bowl so that we can see how much of a curve we get, but you can use anything you want. And I'm just going to put it on my corner. I'm going to slide it up to where the edges are both touching here. You could slide it up anywhere you want, but I'm just going to use that as my general marking. Now I'm going to mark this one. 
But if I take everything and I set them together and I line it up neatly, now it all depends on how good you are at rotary cutting and scissors and stuff, but you could layer all four things or you can do two at a time. And you can take your scissors or you can take your rotary cutter and just cut this out, right? So let's see, if I fold this this way, I'm not very good at lining everything up beautifully, but they're all going to match in the long run, right? So you just take this very carefully, cut our corner. Then, there's got to be a way if you fold it properly that you can, I guess I'd have to go like this, right? And then cut this one, and this one. Now, if that's too scary for you, which it, hey, trust me, I know, I'm, I'm with you there, right? We can lay this now on top of here, or with our batting, we could have taken our bowl and our fabric in each corner, if we're a little bit nervous, and then just draw around each corner. Of course, you would do it on your batting because your batting would be laying on top of your fabric, but I just want to give you an idea of what it's going to look like in case you don't want to take any chances by doing any weird folding and stuff like that. When I put this on here, I saw someone do it and they did the wham, 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 wham really quick when they're folding things and I'm like, that looks a little confusing. But we are quilters, so we can figure this out, right? I can take my scissors if I want, just trim that off. Look, I have more, more corners and stuff to play with. I think I'd be a little nervous layering them all together. This would be a good time if you had a template cut out that had these corners all curved for you. This is the one with the shabby fabrics or whatever. They had the curved batting all set. Hi, Laura. Oh, everyone's on the fluffy wagon now, huh? There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same process. So let me bring the sewing machine over. I think I, has anyone else made the curves? Have I done this right or did I just totally confuse everybody? I think I got it right. Oh, you know what? Maybe you should draw this so the diagonal lines first and then cut the corners. That might be a better idea, right? That way everything is all held together because now I don't have I don't have that diagonal line to sew by. Okay, everyone just stop, backtrack, sew your X first, and then cut your corners. It's not a crisis. I can still do it. It's not that big of a deal. But it's nice to be able to sew corner to corner and have those points right there for you. I am done Christmas shopping. Everything's been mailed out that needs to be mailed and I've wrapped everything for the kids. But I just have three adult children and a couple friends to mail to so it was really easy for me. We don't have big extended families or anything like that. I sent out Christmas cards to my patrons, but nobody else, I received two Christmas cards in the mail, one from a family member and one from one of you guys. I don't think people send out Christmas cards anymore. 
or if they do, they're just not doing it in these last couple of years. It gets expensive, all, all the, the uh, stamps and everything. Yeah, this is working, but I think doing your, sewing your X before would probably make it easier. But eyeballing is it okay. coming out on the YouTube channel. I don't know. It could be coming out on Patreon. But I did, as I was wrapping my kids' presents and stuff, I talked about it. But my kids, they don't need a lot. They're adults. They're 21 to 32. They live on their own. When they want something, they go and buy it. I have to beg them, please, leave me something to buy you for Christmas, you know? So I start harping them around Halloween. What do you want? What do you need? And they finally give me something, usually after Thanksgiving. I don't really have to buy too much for them. Just one gift for each of them. Everyone's either not eating or on a special diet, so nobody needs like candies and chocolates or special treats. I don't have to make cookies. Let me show you what it looks like if we start. Let me see if I have one. I don't think I'm. Let me draw a line real quick, just so that you can see if you want to start at the center versus the edge of the fabric. Sometimes it's nice just to see something different in case you're going to do something different. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. I would mark one, cut all out at the same time. Yeah. I think as you start making things, okay, so here I go. I'm going to start right at the point here on the inside. Just back stitch a little, stitch to the edge. I think once you make one, I don't think, when I, I've learned to only cut out enough for one of whatever I'm making, make one, see how it goes together, and then adjust for the rest. Maybe you need to cut them differently or sew them differently. I've, I've learned not to do all 30 of something in one shot. Give yourself that little bit of room for changing things up a little bit. I can feel right here if I have my fabric in this little area, if it gets all bunched up, you'll be able to feel it here. So you can go ahead and stop and adjust as needed. Congratulating people, what did I miss? Yeah, layer cake would be perfect for this. Exactly, Laura, because I, I just think we, we're all differently, right? So we all sew differently and we all understand directions differently. So go ahead and do one and see if it works for you because just because someone is selling that pattern for 10 or $20 doesn't mean that they're right. They make mistakes, the printer makes mistakes, the editors, they can make mistakes. There could be an error so, and I, of course I read patterns and I read them wrong. So I need to do one and test it out. Oh, Kathy's done with her shopping, woohoo. I made a straight one first with the regular old pointy corners and I thought it would be fun to make a round one and I wanted to wait and do one with you guys. I probably should have done one before but now we, I, I kind of like doing it where we, where I try things out for the first time and you guys can see if it works or doesn't work and how I have to adjust it. 
think some people are worried about being perfect. I don't mind making mistakes in front of you guys. I mean, we all make mistakes when we're sewing or we misinterpret something and have to do it again. I mean, it happens. I mean, when I was a beginner quilter and sewer, I thought everyone was perfect and I thought I was an idiot. Thank you, Brenda. I thought, how come I couldn't understand that? And why do I only need to see that one part when they have their hands here? And why don't they move their hands or do it two or three times so I can see it? Why aren't they talking more? Obviously, I like to talk a lot, so I can understand when they talk a lot. But then I learned it's not me. It's sometimes it's them, sometimes it's a mistake in the pattern. Sometimes it's just the way I interpret things and learn. And I kind of really enjoy, I enjoy the process of checking. I don't like following a pattern 100%. That's, I, first of all, it doesn't always work for me, and I find it a little boring. I like the adventure of sewing scraps, and you don't know what's going to happen. If I just start with this, I've made many quilts where I'm like, okay, I want it to be a lap quilt. So if I start with this 12 and a half inch square, what am I going to do to get it to be lap size? Oh, let's make this block, and then let's add a little border. Let's add some sashing, and let's make another couple blocks. And it's just fun. Hi, S'moresies. S'moresies has come to visit us. Yeah, it's her lunchtime. Are you going to be nice or are you going to cry? Where'd you go? Hi, baby. Are you hungry? We have to have our regular S'moresies break. Come on, sweetie. For those of you who are new, S'moresies is my little, little kitty cat here. She's five years old. I haven't weighed her lately, but she only weighs five or six pounds because she has a digestive disorder. She has some problems with her intestines. So she has her own little medical thing. We all have medical issues, so why shouldn't my cat, right? So when she's hungry, she eats, she's a grazer. She'll eat a small amount of specialty food. And then maybe 10 minutes later, she'll eat again. And then maybe three hours later, she'll eat again. So she's got her routine. She likes to eat at about one o'clock. 11 30 to 1 o'clock so i have to stop and feed her otherwise she'll also just sit there and scream at us again i'm just going to match up my darts put my little clippies in well i haven't had pizza in a long time pizza sounds good i haven't been able to buy the vegan shredded cheese because i'm allergic to milk so i need the vegan stuff i've had pizza for many years without any cheese on it at all and it's really boring that's it? That's all you're going to eat, sweetie? Bye. She's the lovely little girl that woke me up at 4 o'clock this morning and said, Hey, let's get up, Mama. It's time to get up. Exactly, Becky. If it doesn't work for you, then change it. Oh, Lisa, batteries are such an issue. I usually find out that I miss batteries on, like, what, Christmas Day? And Walmart's not open. My grandmother, my grandmother always makes me laugh when I think about her. She's, she passed away in I think like 2000, but she's such a sweetheart. She, she always bought us little handheld video games back in the 70s and 80s, and it was really great. I'll catch up on that in one second, Vicky. And it was really great because she always made sure she put batteries in the video games and she played them for weeks, if not months, ahead of time before Christmas. Many times we would get our new games and the batteries would die in just a few days because Grandma was playing a little Coleco football game for days ahead of time because she said, hey, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, everything works good. Vicky, I'm actually allergic to milk itself not just like the lactate or anything like that milk itself it really does a damage to my intestines i only became allergic to it after i had robbie so when i was 35 i was tested to find out that i had a whole bunch of different food allergies so just having the taking the pills or taking the lactate free or lactose free milk and stuff I, that won't work for me i can't have any type of milk whatsoever and i love cottage cheese i can still have yogurt and ice cream now thankfully and now some cheese but, all right, here we are. We're going to do this again. Now, 
we have to figure out where we're going to leave our opening. We don't want to leave it on these curved petals. So I'm going to have to leave it just a little bit here down where the dart is and just fold it over when I stitch around it. Yeah, I buy a lot of coconut milk ice cream. I drink almond milk. When I first found out when I was 35, so 16 years ago, vegan wasn't popular back then. So I had to have like rice milk because I can't have soy either. I have a serious soy allergy. And then if you have a soy allergy, there's a lot of crossovers. Like I can't eat a lot of tropical fruits like mangoes, pineapples, cherries, and crazy stuff like that. But I could only drink the rice milk and it was like white water. It was the worst thing ever. Then I found out and I found some almond milk and that was much better. So, all right, where did I say? I'm going to leave it open there. So let me go up here. Now we're going to do our curve and this should be an easy curve. I should, where am I sewing? Okay. I should be able to just kind of do the, the gradual two thing like this. Yeah, I don't have, I have, I don't do the vanilla milk. I do the, the, the unsweetened and everything, and it works out really good. Soy is in everything. I cannot have, I can't purchase bread. There's like very, very few breads that are like that. Horchata? Carol, are you saying that rice milk is horrible or that you like it? very Seattle of you. I need to find the right kind of cans of coconut milk that you can let sit and then you can skim the solid parts off the top and turn it into a whipped cream or a mousse or something. Yes, yeah, soy is in everything, everything, everything. It's terrible. I haven't tried any of the oat milk. I have had ripple milk and that's really good. I have no problem with oats. Did you say you have to be careful not to have too many actual like oats for oatmeal because it can cause bloating in the gut? My allergist told me, yeah, it's, it's for me, well, the, the soy causes my throat to close up. I have a, a latex. Latex is the one that crosses over. I have a latex allergy that crosses over into the pineapples and stuff like that, the tropical stuff. My mistake. And then I have the milk stuff causes digestive issues, which is never fun. But they were telling me that we were all born allergic to certain things. Then if you have a trauma in your life, which for the human body, being pregnant is considered a trauma it can then set off those allergies. So you can go all your entire life and then get into a car accident when you're 60 and all of a sudden be allergic to peanut butter. It's really weird. Robin the Rebel. That's right. Robin the Rebel. I do as I want. It's really funny because all through growing up and stuff, I've always been like a people pleaser. I want everyone around me to be happy. I want everyone to like what I'm doing and stuff like that. And then at the same time, hi, Linda. Oh, what's lunchtime for them? What are they having? We all want pizza and tacos over here. We are just finishing up our last bowl. We are making it with curved edges instead of the points. Sorry if I'm yelling. Oh, they're making pizza? Yeah, we, we want pizza. Yeah, Mom and Pop is doing a 12 hour today. So if you guys normally hang out, you can go afterwards. Or if you've never been there, you can try Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. They are doing a 12 hour live stream from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And what's Laura, Lynn, Laura Lynn sewing today? She's sewing a carpenter star block, a carpenter block. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Okay, leave myself some room here. Now, since we have curved edges, we're going to need to 
cut our seam allowance with our pinking shears or you can just take your scissors and you can make little clips like this again flip over to make sure you caught it everywhere and then just trim your seam allowance down a little bit so you don't have too much bulk I find that when I'm going around curvy corners and stuff I tend to have a lot of extra seam allowance in certain areas You can also put a couple little clips on either side of the dart if you think that's going to make it ease a little bit easier when you turn it around. I tried it both ways and haven't noticed any difference. Ta-da! I'm definitely a clean up as you go type of person whether I'm cooking or sewing. heard of horchata mom and pop quilt shop if you just type in on YouTube mom and pop quilt shop they should pop right up you should see I believe it's a picture of mom who's Laura Lynn well welcome Mitzi welcome welcome Right now, if you pop in, I have their, they're actually on my TV right now. It's got a little Christmas scene. It's red and green. It says, be right back. They're doing the 12-hour live stream. Someone just said that they're out for lunch. Linda said they're taking a little lunch break. So you can hang out with me for just a little bit longer before you disappear. And if everyone could be so sweet and just hit that like button. I do a live stream on the first and third Saturday of the month, some type of a sew along, unless someone asks for anything else. I do a sewing or some type of tutorial every Friday. On Wednesdays, I do a Whip It Wednesday where I just show you what's been happening in the craft room all week. Right now in December, I'm trying to put up at least one extra video a week. It goes up randomly. We should discuss also what we're going to do on the January's live streams. So here I have it, it's all rounded like this. I just have to stitch around it. But you see how you don't have these extra bits? If you're just having this as a popcorn bowl, I think it's nice not to have all these edges. A lot of people use these to hold it. I, if you saw on the other day, on yesterday's video, I'm way too clumsy. Yeah, they've had, they've been on for four or five years maybe. Thank you. And they have a whole bunch of quilting tutorials. Lorlin goes live every Saturday at 1 o'clock. So she does some type of a sewing thing. Let me go ahead and stitch around this. We've made it this far. We may as well finish it up. Again, you can hit it with the iron if you want. Or you can just be crazy. I like to roll my seams here. Just make sure they're all kind of even. I think on a project like this, it's really not going to matter too much if you have a little bit of fabric peeking out in either direction. It's not that big of a deal. This is one of these projects, so you're also going to... Thank you, Vicki. Everything on here, Brenda, is 100% cotton. It has to be cotton thread, cotton batting, cotton fabric. If this is going in the microwave, 100%. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to put this little bit in here because if there's a special wrap and zap that they use for like those potato bags that they say you can use, you can buy special batting for it. But if your batting is 100% cotton with no scrim, then you should be okay. I'm not making any guarantees here. If there's any type of a problem you have, please don't come back and yell at me. If you, I don't know what fabric and what batting and what thread you're using. I don't know about your microwaves. I don't know if you can be 100% sure on everything. It could still possibly catch on fire. I don't put mine in the microwave. I have these little plastic things, that little sheets of almost like a cutting board that you set on top. I pick them up at Dollar Tree. They come in different sizes. I put it in the microwave with that on it because saran wrap tends to melt to the food, and I don't like that. So I put this hard piece of plastic on it. I microwave it, and I clean the bowl. And then I put it in my cozy and I take it to sit down and eat like this. So mine does not even go into the microwave at all. I don't want to take any chances. I'm, I'm 
paranoid about fires. Fire scares me. Electricity scares me. I don't want to mess with it. I have a very huge respect for it. I shouldn't say scared of it. I'm just very respectful of the power of lightning and electricity. So I'm again going to do an eighth of an inch all the way around. Move this down so you can see a little. I'll move my hand in a minute. It's the same process, just that we rounded the corners. And I think it comes out really cute with the rounded corners because I really prefer it over these pointy things. Since I'm not putting it in the microwave, I don't need to have those handholds. It's a little bit harder to get everything tucked in here and make it look all nice because we're going down just that little bit, but it's a lot easier here than it would be on a corner, on a curve. So nice and slow. Again, you can just hand sew this closed. Wait, what is someone, what are you covering your bowls with in the microwave? Thread needs to be cotton too. If you hold on a second, I'll go get it from the kitchen. Just hold on one minute, chat among yourselves. Small houses with no stairs are amazing. I bought these at the Dollar Tree a while ago. They come in different sizes. They kind of get a little warped in the microwave. I don't know if you can still find them, but I'm sure you can find them on Amazon or somewhere else. It has these ridges in here, and I put the ridges down so that maybe the steam can come in and out of the bowl. I don't know what the rules are. And you just set it on top like this, and it stops it from being a volcano. Heart-shaped pot holders for January to prepare for heart-shaped pot holders. We haven't done pot holders at all, have we? Okay, hold on. Let me flip my notepad over. We have two days. I like the round corners too. Oh, I know what heart-shaped pot holders you mean. Yes, I wanted to make those. They're the ones where it's not like a pot holder like this. They're shaped like a heart, and you put your hands into it like this, and it does this. Is that the ones you're talking about? Yes, those plastic domes with the little thing like this, the handle, and you can put right on it. But this is what I use. We've been using these for years. I probably bought these like five years ago. All right, I wrote it down, heart-shaped pot holders. <laughs> I can almost read my own writing. So I find these really good. Are they perfect? No. Sometimes things, if you fill your bowl up too high with soup, it can still, because it's just sitting there, it will bubble over. But for the most part, it kind of keeps it from splattering all over the place. I like it. I'm awfully close to the microphone, too. Sorry if I'm yelling. Speaking of microphones, there's a few people occasionally that can't hear me. I will be purchasing a new microphone probably in February. I'm just waiting for all of this shipping stuff to get through. I've talked to a couple people that are really much smarter than me, and they told me which, I'm like, just tell me what to buy. So they told me exactly what to buy, and they gave me the, the website and everything like that, told me which, you know, A, B, or C, and everything like that. So I will be buying a microphone. It'll also help when we go on field trips. When we go on field trips again, I'd make sure I didn't run out of bobbin thread. I have lots and lots of plans in my head for next year. Put a cup of lemon in it in the microwave. Oh yeah, I do that. Purse for cards and some change when going to the bakery. Now, I've made the wristlets, Stephanie, like, 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 like. Are you talking something simple like this? Just something to put your phone in and a little bit of money and stuff like that? 
because I have several videos about different things like this. And I have little change purses, to, you know, just to put a little bit of money and coins in. Yeah, you send me what, the, anyone, if you guys want to send me a link, just send it to my rsislandcrafts at gmail.com. If you ever come across a pattern that you'd like to see a video or you need a little bit of help on, just send it to me there. I have a special folder for suggestions and stuff like that. I can look at it and we try to do free patterns here. And sometimes I, I like to support other people, but I also don't like to spend $10 for a pattern on how to make this. You know what I'm saying? I like to be reasonable with my money, but I do like to support other people. I like the rounded edges the best, too. He's wrestling soon. Okay, Sue. If you don't make it back before we leave, Merry Christmas. We'll talk to you next time. It takes forever to go round and round. Not that it could be because I've gotten up from it twice, but no. I went a little off the line, but that'll be okay. I mean, no one's going to really notice that I went off just a smidge there. Chances are I'll probably keep this one anyways. We'll see. Okay, so here is our bowl. Fuzzies attached. I think this one would definitely be nice for, like I said, the popcorn or the pretzels, or if you're going to put some hard candies in it and little gifts like that. I have not done a jelly roll race quilt on my channel. I've made them. Do we need to do a jelly roll race quilt? That might have to be a future thing, maybe not in January, because I, I can make my own jelly roll, but I would like to. Oh, yeah, right, a baby hat. A yarmulke? I don't want to be picking on anyone and making fun of any religions, but that does kind of resemble it a little bit, right? Oh, this kind of looks like... this. Is fabric would look good on, I just saw myself leaning forward, this would look really good for a beach hat for the kids when they had those big sun hats with a visor that goes around it, that would be a really fun fabric for that. Two and a half hours, oh we can, you know, if we set it ahead of time and everyone knows what they're doing, and we can do it together like that. Bucket hats, there you go. I tell you guys, you just never know with me. I Like I said, I'm tired. I, I've been in a lot of pain this week for my different issues and stuff, and it just makes my brain hurt. Thank you so much, Vicki. I really like them. I, when I first got it, I'm like, why is this person sending, what is this anyways? And I figured out what it was, and I'm like, I'm never going to use that. And then I use it all the time. I've even used it before for ice cream. Okay, so we have we have the heart-shaped pot holders that we can do in January. Yeah, no, it doesn't take long. I think people have done it in less than 20 minutes. I love, I love, I'm all about the sewing and not thinking. Gilligan's hat, yes, a Gilligan's hat, perfect. Becky, I have, um... I've had three surgeries on my right shoulder and one on my left. My body produces a lot of bone spurs, so I've had a lot of those types of surgeries on my heels and everything. But I have something in my neck that has a nerve issue, and it also has something to do with there's arthritis and some disc issues, and it just causes chronic pain. I'm much better now than I was. I've been dealing with this since 2011, and I've learned a lot of different things that I can and can't do and how to make it better. But when I lay down at night and I sleep, if I sleep wrong or the pillows aren't in the right position, I wake up with such a migraine and so much pain. It just takes a bit to get over it. And it just, it affects my brain. I can't think straight. 
Unfortunately, this is the time of year. Our fire departments, I'm just listening to sirens going by, they put a wreath, every fire department, we, I think we have probably 25 firehouses here, if not more. They put a big wreath on the outside of their building and they have all green bulbs on it. And every time there's a fire that they go to, they replace a green bulb with a red. They had to replace three of them yesterday. There was three house fires. There was one just a few miles from me that way. The woman was smoking in bed and there happened to be a problem. And then there was another one where they threw a Molotov cocktail through the window. I thought that was just horrible. It's just a terrible, yeah, bad boys, bad boys. It's just, people do terrible things this time of year. I don't have any health insurance. I'm pretty much paying for everything myself, so I have to be really careful. I'm really a bit nervous about my neck. I find that putting the batting and backing and then quilt it was the hardest part for me. On the jelly roll race quilt or on the bowls? Yeah, on the jelly roll, doing the pin basting and all that, that is always the hardest part. We haven't done too many needle books or pin cushions. I did a quick and simple one with my patron, so I'll have to see if I can find something else. I purchased a pattern for this really cool one, but I just haven't sat down to do it yet. We've made a few pin cushions here and there. I had I had 24/7 migraines for several years before I I think before things got a little bit better and I figured out these stretching routines and stuff that I need to do. You're welcome, Cordula. Wonderful land. Yeah, see that's that simple one that I made for you guys. That's a little bit of cheating. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I don't really think too much about Valentine's gifts, so I don't really make them too much. So let me just write down Valentine's Day. Maybe I'll surprise you. We'll see what we come up with. So I hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas. Are you guys going anywhere? I'm going to go hang out with my kids for a few hours on Christmas Day. I've been trying to decide. You guys might get a total surprise, and maybe I will, maybe I'll be live on Christmas Eve. I don't think, I think I'm going to be home, and I don't think I'm going to have anything going on during the daytime, like around the same time, around noon. It might be fun to just hang out and just chat. I do have my hand embroidery things and stuff like that. Somebody's leaving comments on something. Oven, oh, oven mitts. That's a great idea. Oven mitts. Well, the heart-shaped mitts are going to be like this, so those are going to be the potholder things, but I have a free pattern for oven mitts. So we can do we can do January all about the kitchen. We can do... Thank you, Carol. We can go ahead and do the oven mitts and the heart-shaped potholders in January, and then we can roll the other things. I can do tutorials for the other things also and then we can also we still have two live streams every month that we can work on thank you Denise Merry Christmas to all of you too thank you guys for always hanging out with me thank you for those of you that uh, subscribe and for the come here every week and check out and see what's going on thank you for all the tips and ideas Thank you hugely to my patrons. My patrons are the ones that are basically allowing me to do this. They are the ones that are going to be purchasing the microphones for me because I can use that money to buy certain things to help the YouTube channel. Oh, those really long ones? Yeah. Yeah, a little hand stitching. I thought that might be fun. I can work on my Santa Claus. I would really want to pull out one of those new patterns that I just bought. If you haven't seen it in the beginning, I picked up some new things. Thumbs up, please, everyone. Yes. You guys can also share it in anywhere else. You know, if you want friends that are enjoying stuff like this, send them a link to my channel. <laughs> we did Disney Plus for a while, but no one really watched it. So 
I think that it's we'll have. I, I'm leaning. Don't expect it on Christmas Eve, but keep an eye out. If you're subscribed, YouTube will give you a little notification, and it'll be on your little homepage there that I'm going live. If I do go live, you'll see, you know, today I put up that little notice this morning that says I'm going to go live in so many hours and stuff. If I'm going to go live, you'll see it then, or it might just be a total surprise. It's going to be based on when I wake up and how I feel. I don't want to make any guarantees, but we can just sit here and hang out and just chit chat. We haven't really done that too much. Yeah, Terry, it's it's horrible, and it's like it's it's of course it's one of those invisible diseases nobody really understands, and it's a lot of times why I was a little nervous about going live because as you see, you guys had to help me out with words. I have that problem where I I get stuck on a simple word, like I get stuck on dart for days and days. I had to stop a video I was recording, and I had to look it up and Google it. And it took me ten minutes to figure it out because I just couldn't remember that silly word and lanyard and I get stuck on the same words all the time. You know what, I think I appreciate that but any of us that have these type of issues I think you just kind of get used to it and you learn to roll with it and it just, thank you Carol. Jody, you have a long list of projects. I've talked to a few of you on the side. I talked to many of you separately from here on YouTube, and we chat a bunch. And so many of you have. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. You just yeah, you, it, it, it's what it is. You just have to get going. People who have diabetes and muscular dystrophy and any type of things, if it's something that is not going to kill you right now, you just learn to deal with it and you just keep going. Everyone be very, very safe. Yeah, if you hit the bell next to the subscribe and then you click all, they'll give you all notifications. Otherwise, they notify you every now and then. And again, as a reminder, I hate to be the person that always says, Ooh, look at me, look at me. I'm sorry, Lois. Some people have problems with the volume. It's just a totally random thing. I am ordering a microphone in January and into February so that we can solve this problem. But for right now, I'm really sorry. If you come back and watch the replay, you can usually hear me better. I don't know what it is. There's nothing that I can fix here except purchasing that microphone. So any of you longtime subscribers, YouTube will just occasionally, you hear a lot of YouTubers say it, check to make sure you're still subscribed to all your favorite channels. Because YouTube does these cleanups every few months and they just unsubscribe you. And there's no rhyme or reason because some of you guys like my videos, watch every video, and comment on every video, and YouTube still unsubscribes you. So I don't know what it is. Thank you, Demo. So I'm going to let you guys go. If you guys want to hang over, Mom and Pop are back on. If you go to Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. They're here on YouTube. She's doing a 12-hour live stream right now. So she's running from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. They live in Canada. They are here in the Eastern time zone. So for them, just like me, it's 10 minutes to 2. I'm going to go check my mail because I have two or three packages coming today. And I think one of them might be a fun, a fun surprise from you guys. And the rest, I'm waiting on a couple of... A couple of... Um, what did I buy? I bought a wax stamp kit so you can stamp the backs of an envelope with a wax seal. I've always wanted those and now I have a need for one so I bought one with a flamingo. If you just go up to the search engine here on YouTube, let me see if I can, let's just keep chatting and let's see if I can find them. I had to pull up another page. Come closer to me my children. If anyone can get to it faster than me, well, I know the moderators can put up a link, but you regular people, you're not, you don't have permission to put links in a live stream. I put that there for safety reasons so we don't have any scary people coming through. Bye, Marie. We'll talk to you later. Merry Christmas. Bye, anyone who is leaving. We will see you guys later. I'm just trying to get the link for Mom and Pop so you guys can click over. But it's Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. Things are going very, very slowly on my end. Bye, Vicki. Bye, everybody. 
All right, here we go. For those who've wanted, let's see if this works. You should be able to click on the link. by demo. Merry Christmas. And that should take you over to the mom and pop quilt shop. I will be listening in, but I've got to clean up all this mess and get everything tidied up and back into shape. And then I will probably be going out into the living room. So Merry Christmas. Everyone be safe. I hope you have the best day that you can. I will be seeing you. What is today anyways? Today's the 19th. So we have... One, two, three, four, five, six days till Christmas. If I can, I'm going to try my hardest to do a little bit of a live stream on the 24th, probably around 11, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Then we can all just sit around and chat. You guys can wrap presents or make cookies and just listen to me in the background. There's not going to be much to see. I'll probably just be doing some little handwork so we can all just sit down and relax and maybe have a cup of coffee or a tea. And then that's it. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you love the little bowl cozies. I love these rounded versions. It wasn't that hard. Just remember, sew your diagonal first before you cut the corner. It just makes it easier and it holds it all together nicely. Bye, everybody.